Dad! Dad! Yeah, mate? I remember! Remember what, mate? I remember where I put it. Oh. Yeah. Oh, Daryl! Yeah. Oh, you beauty! <laughs> My film is about a boy who finds the evidence that he and his dad actually did discover this legendary big shrimp that is kind of the talk of the town. They discovered it a while ago, but they lost all evidence that they discovered it and their kind of town nemesis, Ivan, took the credit. We went down to this kind of rural coastal town in New South Wales for Christmas, me and my family. There was a big shrimping culture there. And we went out one night, I think it was like the night before Christmas Eve or something like that, and just watched people shrimping. and it inspired me to make a movie at least about people on living in a in a beach town. I kind of liked the idea of making a, a beach movie. Um, but then I thought, no, I'll make a film about about prawns and shrimps and stuff like that. And I kind of came up with the idea for the story over the next couple of days. I definitely did a lot of investigation on the time period that I set it in. My film was set in the 70s, so I, I wanted it to look and feel like it was in the 70s. So that took a lot of time looking at um, shows like Puberty Blues and um, shows actually made in the 70s, as well as just talking to mum and dad who lived through the 70s. So we went out and looked for clothes and things that might look kind of similar. I had to also um, find a location that wasn't in New South Wales because all of my actors were from Melbourne. So I had to like find a reason to find a way to get that, find a location that would be easy for them to get to that wasn't the location that we wanted to film at. Um, and finally, I had to do a lot of investigation on Super 8 film because I wanted to, I wanted to film some of it in Super 8 as kind of the, the flashback scenes. So I had to figure out whether, firstly, my camera worked and whether it, where, where I could get film for it. I place a lot of importance on on spending a lot of time on the script and the characters. I think they're the most important parts. I wanted the dialogue to be the kind of the focus of the film um, and the, the relationships between the characters to be really well developed. So I spent a lot of time writing and rewriting the script and I, I think it was like two weeks before we shot, um, I had a bit of like a ah, the script is terrible moment and had a bit of a, like a massive rewrite of the script um, which I originally thought was a terrible idea because I thought I was just going to be really uh, disorganised, but it it worked out well because I I, I liked the new version of the script more. Um, and yeah, storyboarding. I was really I was really keen to get all the shots the way that I wanted them before I went to shoot. I'm not the most organised person. I'm pretty like. I'm I actually I'm quite disorganized. I was late to this. <laughs> um, but so I, I had to make I had to put kind of buffers around myself so that lateness or disorganization just couldn't be a problem. They couldn't they couldn't be a problem. And that's the folio that we had to make for media was actually really helpful in that. Um, I'd never done that much preparation for a film before and it really really paid off. Um, just having a schedule. I'd never made a schedule before. Um, and having a schedule there was incredibly important. A lot of my shoots in the past have gone pretty chaotically and this one went went really, really well. The the one issue we ran into was we um, ran out of battery at one point and I had foolishly thought that one battery would be enough to film for a day and it wasn't. We were filming in a public location. Um, we were filming at a, at a gas station um, or a general convenience store um, in a place called Coronet Bay and they were really generous to let us film there and um, but they, they weren't going to close the store down so that was something else we had to deal with. We had to deal with customers coming in and asking about the film and they were just generally interested in the film but that was also kind of difficult because we were in the middle of a take and they were asking us, oh what's this, you know. So yeah, but other than that it went really smoothly. <laughs> Daryl! I, yeah, just started editing it together and I, I love post-production so I spend a lot of time um, in it just kind of because I find it quite fun putting the film all together. I had a song that I really wanted to use um, in the opening credits 
and didn't think about copyright. And when I finished the film, I loved it, but the song, I just, I couldn't use the song. I had to find another song. And that was probably the biggest issue I ran into in prose production was finding new songs. So I, my suggestion would be just start off with songs that you know you can use. I spent a lot of time color correcting. I wanted it to have like a 70s filmic look. Um, so I used Film Convert for that. The best thing you can possibly do for a film is to, to over plan it, um, and to, to, to completely go um, overboard on the preparation. It'll be tedious while you're doing it, but it'll make everything less stressful in the long run. And I think you'll enjoy the process more if you have everything sorted out. Sound is such an important part of a film. My biggest piece of advice with sound would be to know how important it is. And if there's a bit of wind um, in your shot, you, you need to acknowledge that and you need to kind of remedy it by putting a, a wind, a, a dead cat on, or perhaps like creating like a wind buffer. We did that on our shoot. I think we used a reflector as a wind buffer. And with lighting, I, I would say, um, use natural light as much as possible. It's the easiest light to kind of, it, it just looks good most of the time. Um, and when you're indoors, utilize the white spaces in the room. If you have like white walls or um, reflective areas, utilize them because it gives a really soft light. Growing up and still to this day, I, I love acting and I've always loved performing. Um, so I, I kind of, I've been on both sides of the camera in a way. When, I, when I'm directing actors, I always try to think about it from their point of view. Acting on a film is hard enough because you're always having to break character and go back and do a line and it's, it's not, it's actually a really limiting place to act. And so the more you can do as a director to accommodate the actors and to make them feel like they can stay in character and they can um, really feel the narrative the better your performances you'll get. Part of that is just organisation. Part of that is when the actors arrive, don't have them waiting around for you to set up a really technical shot. Just set that up before they get there so that when they get there, they can just act and they can do their thing. They don't have to you know, help you hold a tripod or something like that. Make the story really clear to them. Try and have a read through. I had a read through with proof and it worked really well um, because sometimes actors, they just read their own part and they don't read the whole story um, so if you have a read through they know the story they know the relationships between the characters and you can say we're doing this scene you remember the read through we did that scene where you're in the house well we're doing that now and they're okay well that's where we are that's how i have to be so you're not having to constantly explain the context of where they are which is constant which is really hard on film because you obviously you don't shoot chronologically i did um lighting and super 8 film for my production exercises um, Super 8 film was super helpful because I, I had no, I, I had never used film at all um, to make a movie before, and so I had to, you know, source the film. I had to put it in the camera myself. I had to film a bunch of stuff and then actually see if it if it came out all right. And what I learned from doing that was that my camera worked but would break very soon. So I had to either source a new camera or source a yeah, so basically I had to source a new camera. Kevin's Ivan's son. Ever since I met him, he's been quite attached to me. And I don't say that lightly. Daryl! Every single time. I'm not a fan of that kid. Hopefully it won't be the last film you make. So if it doesn't go the way you want, don't. It's not the end of the world. You'll make more films. You'll learn. Failures are, are just like a little stepping stone.